Hey everyone, Frank here. Let's learn something new. Let's talk about the MetaQuest 3 in education. Now, I was really excited to get the MetaQuest 3, as were a lot of people, and a lot of people look at this as a fantastic entertainment device. It's great for playing VR video games as a standalone headset. I like a lot of RPG games myself. In fact, comment down below on your favorite games for the MetaQuest 3. But, of course, this channel is about how we can use technology to learn and teach more effectively. So I was really excited to see what sort of uses I could get out of this device from a learning and teaching standpoint. And I have found an application that I absolutely love. It's really, really cool. And in this video, we're going to take a look at that application and why I think it would be a very useful application in any learning and teaching environment. I know that I'll be using it quite a bit. So let's go take a look at Noda, a really interesting application for mind mapping and connecting ideas together. I'm excited to show you Noda, not just because it's a great mind mapping and brainstorming application, but it also looks fantastic on the MetaQuest 3. Let's put on the headset. And as always, I'm going to use my NearHub S55 interactive whiteboard. This is something that I'll use if I'm in an environment where I want to share what I have happening in the headset with an audience. So I'll go ahead and I'll start casting it to the screen there. So we'll go ahead and cast that out to the NearHub interactive whiteboard and we'll open up Noda the application. Now Noda is an application that will allow me to create nodes. So the idea behind it is that I'll have an environment that I'm in and I can go into the menu here and I can actually change the location to different types of environments that I might be in. I can be in a hangar, I can be in a moon room, I can be in a nice gallery. And what's interesting is that even if I'm in one of these environments, when I open up any previously created maps, they will actually appear in that environment. You can see there's a number of different settings, including a tour that'll give you a comprehensive walkthrough of what to do. But I'm going to go in and I'm going to go to maps and open up one of the maps that I previously created. You'll notice that the map is actually right here. I'm right in the middle of the map. And you can see here that I've got a whole bunch of different maps that I've created, well, a whole bunch of different connections that I've created for a course design, as well as some brainstorming. I'm just gonna bring the menu closer to me so that I can close it down. And I can move around my environment simply by pressing and then clicking and I'll move around the environment. You can see my map is over here and I can move to different environments. This is very useful. Let's say, for example, I wanna create a map here on top of this object. No problem at all, I'll just move it in front of me. And then what I can do is I can just go and create a node. And when I have the node here, I can select that node and then I can do things like I can make modifications to it. So I could, for example, change the color of the node. Maybe we'll make it orange. Maybe I want to go in and change the shape of the node. I'll make it a pyramid. Maybe I want to go in. I could even change the size of the node. So if I actually, I'll say I'm done there, I can actually grab the node and make it larger, move it, and then I can always select it to continue making more modifications. So you can see that I'm really building up this node. I, one of the things I really like with this, of course, I'll give it a name, I'll call it demo. And then what I can do is I can do things like add notes to it. Put on the microphone. This is a Noda node. It's a really cool way of creating a object that I can refer to at a later time. So you can see that by using the microphone, I can go in and I can take notes. So you can see here, I've got my note in here. This is a Noda note, and I might have to make some changes to some of the spelling. I can actually even link it out to a web page. So I could go in here and let's say there's a page here. So let's say I want to do something like, you know, www. I'll do something uh, small, ibm.com, just because it's less characters to type in. But again, I could use voice typing if I wanted to. I have the microphone to speak to it. But I'll just go in and I'll go to ibm.com. It'll bring it up as a page and that'll now be attached to this particular node. You can see my node appears here as well. So I've got everything here. I can make further modifications and I can be done. So now I can click on the note and I can see the note that was there. I can go in, I can move this around. Now, of course, the real power of Noda is when I start connecting nodes together. So let's create another node. It'll remember the last node that I created was a pyramid. And so I can go in, select it, and I can change this, maybe this one, will be a square and maybe this will be a green square. So, and I could again put shapes and I'll say that, I'll just say this is number two, TW0. And um, let's 
TWO. And then I can go in here and I can say I'm done. And now I've got this node. Then one of the powerful things I can do, let's just move my nodes right in front of me here, is I can actually take this node and connect it to the other node. So I'll just go here and connect the two nodes together. I can even go and modify the line by selecting the line. And now I can say connect. Now, obviously I can do things that are a little bit more meaningful here. So I can say connect and we'll say connect and done. And now I've got my nodes connected and I can move them around and they will remain connected. Let's go back to the map that I did over here and you'll see a little bit more of a built up map that I've done. So I created all of these different objects. I created different types and shapes and colors. I have different resources and tiles. And you can even go in, so let's go a little bit further to a blank area. Let's say I wanna go in and create a node. I'll create a node here. And if I go into this node, I can actually go into make modifications on here. So it's a node type. I can go in and make different types of nodes. So I can actually have different types of nodes in here. I can go in and create an image. One of the thing that's neat is you actually have some artificial intelligence in here. So I could say this is going to be a cat. So I'll call my node the cat node. I'll actually select it again and I'll select that node and I can actually go into an image here, grab an image and it'll actually use some AI credits to generate an image that it thinks would be useful here. So I will go ahead and make that a cat and now I have this great image of a cat. You can also go into information nodes here. So you can go in here, I'll say I'm done here and I can move this around and I've got the cat tile in here. You can also import your own images. So let's create another node and I'll just leave it as a square here. But if I go into image, I can actually go and use emo emo emoji cons so we can put those in there. And again, it's just another note that we have here and I can connect the two together again, select this node, connect it to this node and I can move them around in space. This is a very useful way of connecting ideas together. So if we take a look at this brainstorming, oh, I wound up creating a node here, so we get rid of that. If I go here to this brainstorm node, you'll notice that I can actually go in, I can actually reach down, I can grab that node, bring it up, and I can actually, I can actually move myself up as well. So one of the things I can do is I can actually move the environment, so I can move up and down in the environment get a little bit dizzy here, but that allows me to, for example, go back to where I was before. So back to my connect node, for example. And again, I can go up, I can scroll myself up so I can get a high view over the environment, scroll around, find different nodes that I may have connected to, different things that I can put in different areas. As I fill up this room with my ideas and my thoughts, I have great amount of connectivity. Now, a thing that I can also do is have meetings. So I can actually set up a meeting where others can come and participate and create different objects in this room. Again, you can change your location. There are some music options in here. You can go to a web browser, a secure web browser, if you wanna find an object. This is actually kind of useful. Let me go ahead and do this as well. So we'll go into our good friend IBM. So I'll just clear this and let's go into IBM here. Now again, you could have obviously any, any website that you wanna to go to. I'm just picking on IBM because it's short and it's good for demos. So we go in here. One of the things that I can also do, oh, I didn't know if I put IBM in here properly. So we'll go into ibm.com, ibm.com. And that should take us right there. Oh, lots of WWs, uh, too many WWs. So let's take some of those out. Only when you're doing demos do you, do you mistype things so badly. So here we go, okay, fine. So I'll just go in here and we'll just scroll down and we'll go IBM United States. And you'll see that I can then go, it actually brought me to Canada. But let's say I like this image, I can actually grab this image. So I can grab this image with the controllers and then I can cut this image and now I can use this image in my notes. So I'm actually able to select that image so we'll go ahead and select it. Oh, drag this down a little bit. And now I've got this image here as a node. And I'll close the browser here. So you can see I can now make that a node. Now, again, I'm kind of having this, uh, this bit of a vertigo here, but I can bring this node down with me as I scroll down. I can say, come with me node. We're gonna go down a little bit further. I could just, of course, make it to the end of location where I actually want it to be. But 
you can see here that there's a lot of different ways that we can cut images, we can move around the environment, and as you get more and more used to it, I myself am still a learning uh, person at this point. I'm on a learning curve with this, but I really do like a lot of the capabilities of using Noda. So something to consider, something to consider for your own, um, your own learning, your own note taking, your own connectivity, your own mind mapping. I kind of like the moon room a little bit here. So you can see that Noda is a fantastic tool, highly recommend it, something I'm really excited about when it comes to learning and teaching and working together and collaborating on brainstorming with the MetaQuest 3. So there you have it, that's Noda. I think it's really useful. I think it's going to evolve even more, but as it stands right now, I think it's a very useful app that I'll be using on a regular basis. I'm also excited to find some more users that have the VR headsets, maybe get some more for my classroom and see if I can have more collaborative sessions. That'll be very interesting as well. But meanwhile, it's a great way for me to build and share mind maps that I think will be very useful to explain concepts, connect things together, and allow me to move through those concepts in a much more organic way. So it's a very cool tool. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like, subscribe for more videos on how we can use technology like the MetaQuest 3 to learn and teach more effectively, and uh, comment down below on how you think you'll use the MetaQuest 3 in your own learning and teaching. Talk to you in the next video and see you later.